Hey, in this video, I'll show you how to use the filters. So when you first log in, what you want to do is go to this columns button on the far right. There's two key columns to pay attention to here. You have select columns. You can turn on and off different columns, whatever you want to see. And you can choose your arrangement right next door. So you can choose your order. So once you have that all set, you can click continue, hit apply, and those filters will be in place from left to right, depending on whatever order you selected. And then you can start applying your filters. So here's an example. I'm going to go to the bottom. Right now we have a little over 30,000 stocks in the platform. And what I wanna do is let's start playing with these filters. We'll go to score. Scoring system is zero to 100. What I wanna do is let's just go uh, 50 and higher. We'll hit apply. And you can see your numbers start to adjust. So we went from a little over 30,000 down to 13,000. And then you're gonna see your filters, they're applied like so. You can also turn them off and we'll do that in a second, but um, I'll keep going to make this list more narrow. Um, let's go a margin of safety of 50% or higher. We'll hit apply. And you can see those filters, those applied filters start to grow. And my number starts to decrease down to 5,000. Let's keep going. Um, let's just go uh, share prices between like 50 and 100. Go apply. And there we go, down to 568. So you can see that list starting to narrow. Um, of course, you can turn these off. Like if I wanted to you know, get rid of the share price filter or get rid of all, you can just hit the little X. But I'm just going to get rid of the, the share price filter. We'll hit X. And let's say I like this filter. You can go over to filters and you can you see here, I have a few already saved, like one for Australia, one for India. Um, let's go ahead and save it. We'll save it, we'll give it a name. I'll call it the score and MOS 50 plus. There we go. And that's it for filters. Every time you come back, instead of like resetting your filters, you can literally go here, click whatever filter you want. It'll just uh, bring it up right away. Just to save you a lot of time that way. So hopefully this helps with the filtering. Hey, in this video, I'll show you how to use the notifications and settings. So if you go to the upper right, go to profile, then go to notifications and settings. This page allows you to really tailor your experience on ticker to your liking. So for example, you can turn on and off your stockpiling and watch list alerts. You can also set filters for whatever countries you want to see in the stocks table. And same thing for exchanges. So here I just turned on I've got Australia, India, US. You can turn these off, go to save, and then that's gonna change the number of stocks that are shown on the stocks table. And then if you go to the bottom, this was a handy feature. This is the default duration. So I like to see the one year by default. Um, let's say I wanna change that to six month. I'll go to, I'll just click six month, hit save, and then I'll search for a stock. Give me a second. And then if you go to the bottom, you'll see the default here shows the six month. Um, so that just makes it a lot easier when you're jumping from one stock to the next. You don't have to keep changing that duration. It's going to be set to how you like it. Of course, you can always click the little buttons to see the difference here, but um, handy little feature. Now, going back here, I do suggest you stop by this page often because we will be adding more bells and whistles to allow you to customize your experience a little more. So stay tuned. Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the 4M analysis. We're going to keep this short and sweet. If you want a longer version, you can see uh, I do try to do 4M analysis videos on our YouTube channel. Those can be sometimes 10, sometimes 20 minutes long. Um, but in this case, we'll keep it short and sweet just to show you how to use the tool. We're going to look at AMD. And whenever you arrive on a stock, if you go to the right, you'll see 4M analysis. Go ahead and click that and we'll get started. So right away, we tell you what the 4M analysis is. We have the margin of safety is the math part of investing. Of course, a wise investor should always look past the numbers and look at the business. So that's what this tool does for us. It guides us through that process. So we're looking at the meaning, which is the business model, the moat, which is the competition, and then management, which is the CEO. 
go ahead click get started and right away we set expectations what are we going for so we're going for the highest score possible a score between 80 and 100 is a high confidence you should have high confidence buying the stock if you get a score between 60 and 79 it's moderate confidence maybe move forward or maybe look for other stocks and then 59 or lower is low confidence so you should probably look for other stocks we'll go continue margin of safety step this is done for us ticker in this case has is showing us that the margin of safety is 44 score is 94 and this stock is a watch it would be on sale if this margin of safety was 50 percent or higher so it's pretty close but we'll go continue then we've got the meaning now i already did this so um, i'm just walking through again so you'll see some of these marks are in place already but you have this little meter here you can drag from left to right we also have little like um, tallies here showing what other customers already made these votes so as more people use the tool we use this crowdsource data to make it more efficient to work through the tool or work through this analysis so in this case somebody already selected very high that was me because i did this already but you'll see these numbers grow as uh, as you continue to use the tool um, how well do you understand the business model as warren buffett teaches us we should invest in businesses we know i know tech well i don't know pharma in this case this is a tech business so i'm going very high but if it were a, a pharma business i'd probably go very low then you want to look for negative news this is something that we should all do as investors is just check the news see if there's any legal issues or major concerns in the last 30 days in this case there is not and if you were to click this link it just opens in a new window just to make uh, your search a little more efficient but it will go no and then go continue then this section here same thing uses crowdsourced information to tally up who have other users within ticker selected as competitors just makes your process a little more efficient so and these will be ranked from highest number to lowest so you can find competitors a little faster so you see here a few people already selected uh, intel and nvidia as competitors that makes perfect sense um, i have a few others selected already like micron and marvel um, but pay attention here you do need five competitors selected to engage this continue button so keep that in mind it wants a thorough analysis done you need five competitors so we'll go continue then we get to management we're almost done so it should fill in the ceo in this case that's lisa sue she's been at amd 10 years so you enter the 10 and then has a share price increased to an all-time high since she's been there this is yes so i'm going yes we'll go continue and then is there negative news on lisa in the last 30 days in this case there is not she's uh, she stays off social media and she's not involved in politics. She's hyper focused on her customers and providing a great product. She's a good CEO. Um, how confident are you that Lisa will increase the share price over the next five to 10 years? In this case, I put very high. You'll see the little tallies below, of course, where people are voting. That'll help you out there. And then there's Glassdoor. So in this case, you know, there we did some homework on this and there's a few other people that did this too. The higher the Glassdoor rating or the rating employees have of the company, there can be a correlation to a higher share price. So in this case, AMD has a 4.2 Glassdoor rating. Enter that, click continue, and our analysis is done. We've got a 90 out of 100, high confidence to go ahead and buy this stock. And you can see how it breaks down below. But hope this video helps. And I'll be doing more of these on YouTube. So stay tuned there. Hey, in this video, I'd like to talk about the summary. So you probably notice when you log in to ticker, you see stocks rated as either on sale, watch, or overpriced. Now that doesn't mean a stock is a buy, hold, or sell. Although in some cases you could use that summary and go ahead and make a buy or selling decision. Um, but if you really want to reduce the risk of losing money and really increase your confidence of buying a great stock, you should use the 4M analysis. There's another video that talks about that, but it teaches you and guides you to not only look at the numbers, but look past the numbers and look at the business. So the 4Ms being the margin of safety, that's the math part of investing. Then you get the meaning, the moat, and the management. Meaning being the, the business model, moat being the competition, and then management being the CEO. But anyway back to summary so we calculate on sale watch over price by using two main variables there's a lot of factors that go into it but we look at the score and the margin of safety the scores overall financial strength of a stock 
margin of safety is the upside potential, what kind of returns you can make. So what we do is we like to see a stock that has a score of 50 or higher and margin of safety of 50 or higher to be on sale. That's the requirement. Warren Buffett teaches us we should look for stocks with a margin of safety of 50% or higher. So when it comes to watch, only one of those criteria need to be met. So let's say a stock has a score greater than 50, but margin of safety less than 50. That would be watch, or you can flip it around. You could have a stock that's that has a score less than 50 and margin of safety greater than 50. Still one criteria met, that means it's watch. Then you got overpriced, you know where this is going. This means both criteria do not meet our expectations. So the score is less than 50, margin of safety is less than 50. Now to give you context here, the great majority of stocks in ticker are overpriced. Only about 15% of the stocks are on sale. It is actually quite difficult to reach an on sale status. Ticker does a lot of hard work for us. We look at five years of historical data to really determine the overall financial strength. So we're looking at variables like your, your revenue, your net income, EPS, your free cash, we also factor in assets and equities as well as debts and liabilities. So we do a lot of heavy lifting behind the scenes that really roll up to that, that summary. Now, what you're looking here, uh, looking at here on my screen, this is my portfolio and or my, um, my watch list. There are a few stocks in here that I do hold in my portfolio. Like you can see, I've got and currently I've got Palantir, PayPal. You can see those are on sale. Um, Square is a watch. Um, but there is a stock here in my portfolio, Atlassian, overpriced. Check this out. Score is 22. Margin of safety is zero. Now, you may be wondering, why in the world do I invest in a stock like that? That's where the 4M comes in. So that first M, the margin of safety, does not look good. But the meaning, moat, and management in my world, um, this is a software engineering tool. My background is mainly in tech. A lot of big companies use Atlassian products like Jira and Trello. Um, but anyway, it checked the other three boxes. To me, that was enough to move forward. So again, you can make buying or selling decisions based on the summary alone. Again, you can do that, but it's highly recommended. You use that forum analysis that can really determine if it's truly a good buy or sell. But hopefully this video gives you a little more context here on the summary within Ticker. Thanks. In this video, I'll show you how to use your watch list. So when you go through the onboarding, you probably noticed we teach you about the score, about the MOS, and then we, we allow you to pick a few industries you're interested in, which allows you to pick a few stocks. So stocks are then added to your watch list by default. So on the left, if you go to watch list, you'll see your watch list is waiting there for you. Um, in this case, I have one, you can create multiple watch lists. I know some of you like to create like one for tech or one for um, industrials or financials or whatever. Um, but in this case, I have the one and using your watch list is pretty easy. You can sort filter um, very similar to how you do on the stocks page. So it, uh, it operates very much the same way. You can also share your watch list with your friends. You get this little link. Um, you can also make it private, but that way you can share on social media or send via email. You can also rename and you can delete. And you may also delete by clicking the little minus sign on the left here as well. Now with this, if you wanna add more stocks to your watch list, like for example, you'll if you go far right, you'll see the little stars. Let's go to the stocks page. I'm just gonna click the pagination. We'll go right a little bit. I'll go to the far right, see if there's anything clicked. Um, I see that one's added, but I'm going to go here, click the star. It'll ask you which watch list you want it added to. I'll just add it to my one. And you'll see the little star pop up. And if I go back here, you'll see that stock has been added to my watch list. So yeah, that's a quick and easy way to add stocks to your watch list. You may also, here's another example. Let's pick a stock that's not there, this JSW Steel. When you click on a stock here, you can go to add to watch list. Same thing, it's going to give you the drop down. You can choose which watch list it is added to. And there you go, there's watch list. 
Hey, in this video, I'll talk about Sean's portfolio. In other words, my portfolio. So right now we're working on a new feature. You'll see up top these little like soon. These are coming soon features. We're working on a people section. So this will allow you to make your portfolio or portfolios public. You have the option to keep it private or public. But if it's public, other people can follow you. For example, I'm going to have my portfolio public. And if you were to follow me and I make changes to my portfolio, you're going to get an email notification saying, hey, Sean just bought shares of this stock or sold shares of this stock. So it really allows you to invest real time with other people. With my portfolio right now, because this is all a work in progress, you can click Sean's portfolio. This will open up in a new window. This is just temporary right now where you can actually see what I invest in and the allocation percentage. Again, it's just temporary until we get two features done. First, uh, or I shouldn't say first, one of those features is the people section. Coming before that is the portfolio tracker, which we're working on as we speak, as of uh, this is the middle of July. So the portfolio tracker allows you to add your portfolio or multiple portfolios to ticker. There'll be three ways that the connection is made or the stocks are updated. Number one is you can do it manually. Number two, you can do a CSV export from your broker and import that right into ticker. Like for example, I use TD Ameritrade. So I can go over to TD Ameritrade, export that CSV import into ticker. And there you go. So it's nice and efficient. The third way, there are certain brokers we're able to make a connection to. So if you were to buy or sell stocks in that actual broker, they will update automatically within ticker. So we're working on all those things. So once we get the portfolio tracker in place, then we can finish the people section. Again, that you can see other people. In that case, you'll see this little Sean's portfolio will probably go away. And my portfolio, if you click on people, you'll see it right there. But, but of course, there's a lot of other investors within ticker you'll be able to follow. I think this will be a a really cool feature to invest with each other, kind of monitor what we're doing um, and really just help uh, improve the community. So uh, really cannot wait for what's to come on these multiple features I've discussed. But for the time being, if you're interested, you can just go over to Sean's portfolio, go here and you can see what I hold today. Hope that helps.